Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we are going to learn about the static correction or either it's called the weathering correction. Also, we are going to discuss about the residual static which is left during the static correction. So let's uh, understand what is uh, static correction and, and why we need to apply this type of correction to our seismic data. So the these static corrections are the correction which apply to the seismic reflection data to remove the effect of the weather layer, such as you can see in this figures on the left side. So let's say your source and receivers are here. So source is on the top and receivers are on the bottom. This is because once your your surface is not very straight I mean somewhere you have the undulating or you have some high and low so in that case you will have this type of problems even if in case you have the flat over there but in the subsurface your low velocity zone is undulating so that's why we need to apply this correction so these corrections are applied by reducing the data with respect to a data plane which is normally is here so let's say if your source and receivers are here and your low velocity layer which is your v1 and v2 so the low velocity layer is also very inconsistent so let's say here you have the thickness is very low and over here you have the high thickness and over here you have a very very big thickness of the low velocity layer. So in the, this case, you will have the undulating in your data set and your reflection coming from the subsurface reflectors or the horizons will not be accurate. So that's why we have to define a datum plane and bring all our data to with respect to this point. So here is another example, so which shows here. So if we can zoom it in uh, or you can look closely to this place so let's say your source is here and your reflectors are or your receivers are here so one is here there and so on and this one is very dark so over here you can see your first uh, reflect your trace from this reflector is this one second third and fourth fifth and so on so you see this one is over here then this one is a little bit down then up and down and like this one but once you have your datum plane which is over here and you bring all your data with respect to this datum plane then you see the hyperbolic move out is very consistent so this is actually why we need to apply this static correction so we look at the understanding the low velocity layer and also the topo topographic effect of doing the static correction so there are uh, another two examples so with the first example is actually the low velocity layer so let's say if your uh, your surface is very very gentle i mean there is no up and down so but you have your low velocity layer is like this one so it's like anticline structure so uh, you have the low velocity in this section you have high this section you have low so when your wave travel here so it will take less time here and high time here so that's why your low velocity layer will bring your reflection from this reflectors a bit down because this is this will take more time because this velocity is very low and here it will take more time uh, short time short time so that's why the reflection from this reflector will come here because it's calculating the time because everything what you are doing is actually in time so that's why if you can bring your datum plane over here then your reflectors which is the horizontal reflector will appear as a true position of the reflector and the second case is the topography of the surface so let's say you have the high down and the very high and low like this one so this is a topographic surface so when you uh, do a survey here then the similar effect will be coming or recording in the data set because of the horizontal reflector actually your reflector was very straight but why it taking long time or the short time because of the topography so let's say your receiver was here 
and this receiver so it will take longer path and this will take shorter path even it is the horizontal reflector so in this case your reflection will be appears here and this one appears in this side so now we understand what is static correction why we need to apply so what is actually the aim of this static correction so actually the aim of static correction is to adjust the seismic traces in such a way that the source and receivers are present at a horizontal level so to achieve this travel time of the separate trace are corrected so as we have look at the dynamic correction or such as nmo that is also the objective is to bring source and receiver at the same position so the static correction is actually the whole trace is corrected with the same time shift but in dynamic correction different time windows and in the trace are corrected differently like we are picking each and every trace for uh, nmo correction so uh, for picking the or to apply the first uh, apply the static correction the first step is you have to get the first break picking so first break picking is also a tricky part so over here is a trace given here so if you have the trace so first break is actually the event which comes or recorded at the seismogram firstly or uh, or the prominent amplitude on a seismogram which is recorded at the first step so you can uh, either there are different uh, i mean the component of the trace so let's say you have the zero crossing positive slope which is this one this is your cross so this is your trap and this is zero crossing negative slope so when you are doing the static correction so throughout the project you have to pick the the same thing which same event which you are uh, picking for individual trace so let's say if you are picking the zero crossing positive slope then throughout the project you will pick the zero crossing positive slope or either if you are going for the crest then you can go for the crest so uh, normally for uh, static correction we have the two type of shooting so we have the forward shooting and reverse shooting so forward shooting means then you have the source here and in this case you, we have 24 receivers on this direction then again what we do we fire a shot on the other side of the receivers then it will record it like this one so this is called the reciprocity of the seismic data so once you have the both travel both recorded ready then what you have to do you have to pick the first break so in this case we are picking the zero crossing positive slope which is shown by this small red uh, uh dash lines this can be either up and down but you have to pick the first break so i think this one trace is uh has some noise or something but just ignore this one you, we can consider this is all everything is okay so once you pick the first break then you have to plot that uh, that uh, the first breaks to the uh time distance graph so all the points with respect to the forward shooting you will plot it here and the re reverse shooting you will plot it here then you have to uh, pass the best fit line which is the first best fit line which is the v naught and the second best fit line is the velocity of the first layer so after that uh, what you have to do uh, you have to find the thickness of the layer so normally the v naught and v naught uh, v1 is actually the velocity of the uh, this layer which is the first layer and this second layer is denoted by v naught and v1 with the best fit line so the crossover distance is in here this is xc which is shown in the previous figure so now what you can do you can calculate the thickness by two methods so one is intercept equation uh, in which you are, we are using the intercept time which is ti and the second equation which you can use the crossover distance which is your xc so crossover distance and uh, intercept travel time can be used to calculate the uh, thickness of the uh, low velocity zone layer so using the refraction method the velocity and the thickness of the near surface weather layer are determined which are 
use for computation of static correction for application of seismic reflection data. So here is a graphical example uh, how once we already find the uh, static or the thickness of the layer. So let's say there are multiple layer which is V0, V1 and we have to define the datum plane below this one. So normally in the subsurface we have multiple layer which are actually we don't want them to be encountered in our seismic uh, reflection data. So what we do we apply the static correction we uh, we we already know the thickness of the first layer second layer so below these two layer uh, throughout the zone we have to define the datum plane so from this uh, expression you can apply the static correction so over here uh, your h is thickness of the first layer and h1 is thickness of second layer v is the v0 is the velocity of first layer v1 is velocity of second layer this one then if you have multiple then you can carry on and multiply by 1000 so the static correction which is uh, normally uh, is a two type which is the weather layer or the elevation static so e minus d elevation minus datum divided by replacement velocity can be uh, can be done by this expression so here is an example from uh, Han 20 so uh, this one data is uh, without static correction so you can see uh, a lot of artifacts are missing uh, in the middle area because must be there will be a low velocity zone there so that's why your signal is going up and down so you you, you do, don't have the better reflectivity in the middle but in the side area it's fine but when you apply once you apply the static correction then you can see the reflectors from this position is straightening up so the stacking of this velocity um, data is accurately uh, fine. So another uh, term uh, which we use for um, residual static. So uh, what is residual static? So actually once we apply the topographic correction and the reflection static uh, which actually solve this problem only for a certain part. So let's say some part it's already solved but the other part uh, is still remains so most of the time the small shift between the trace traces is remain uh, in the data so to correct for further small shift the residual static is applied so let's say in this example so let's say this part i'm not sure uh, either they have applied the uh, residual static but this the upper layer is still not results it's appear from here so you have the first, second, and third layer, but in here you can only uh, have the two layers. Maybe this one is not very prominent. Actually, you have the first layer. So maybe for this data set, we need to apply the residual static. So the cause of uh, the uh, static displacement in the data. So normally uh, there's two causes. One is the topography. Some, sometimes your source and receivers are present at a different vertical position and another factor or the cause uh, for uh, having the residual static is the different depth of the borehole so let's say if you're using dynamite uh, then your difference in the borehole length or uh, borehole depth sorry so which is the explosive or fired so uh, another cause is the weather layer uh, with the relative slow velocity so let's say if you already find the weather layer but the relative velocity is very low so then it can be cause the residual static then you have to apply the residual static so obviously we have the solution for this so uh, the shift is divided into a value of source uh, which is called the source static and the value of the receiver which is called the receiver static so then you have to apply two times and then uh, uh, residual static which can be applied by travel time decomposition and also the stack power maximization so these are two three methods or solution possible solution for the residual static correction okay thank you so much and uh, uh, have a good day